another episode. Hope you're doing well. And the hope of our program is to get you closer to cultures, world cultures, their communication styles, leadership, how they do business, what to look for, what to do, what not to do for you to succeed in a global world. And the topic of today will be very quick, but I think it is so important in 2020. And guess what? It is obviously the team environment in a virtual uh, world and its uh, relationship with cultural diversity. In today's global village environment, doing business increasingly means operating in a virtual environment. A virtual team can consist of members across towns, countries, and time zones. A virtual team is not that different from a team that meets face-to-face. All teams require similar foundation. They all need a healthy degree of trust, accountability, defined roles, and good leadership. Common intention purposes and goals are the distinguishing features of a team. Virtual teams working across borders are being established for a variety of reasons, such as the pursuit of resources in other markets, company mergers and acquisitions, a limited potential for growth at home, sourcing of human capital talent from the global arena. These are just a few of the many reasons why they are established. While virtual teams have many virtues, they can be faster, smarter, more flexible, and adaptable, thereby providing a greater opportunities to use talent. They also need to be well-designed, resourced, managed, and supported, or they will fail. Um, we will discuss a few challenges and um, we'll focus on some uh, current ones that face culturally diverse virtual teams. Communication and trust being the critical factors. Um, then we can, we can discuss three cultures that a lot of um, experts on the field have identified and promotes as being the three key areas that are essential for the success of any a global team. So we'll start with challenges here and we must be able to adapt to and leverage on the different work styles and cultures and utilize appropriate technologies to create efficiencies in the global workplace. Some of the key challenges for culturally diverse virtual teams are the need to focus on relationships before tasks. The very word team, which has different cultural meanings, i.e. different perceptions and ways of identifying with the group and different understanding of what is appropriate team behavior. Then we have communication. And due to the, the geographical distance, separating the members. Virtual teams rely on communication and information technologies to facilitate to facilitate interaction and coordinate work. Communication is a critical factor for any team, but particularly for virtual teams are also culturally diverse. Uh, there is a um, diagram that I've seen and that of um, Morabian and I looked at his studies closely he uh, conducted they were conducted back in 1960s and it highlighted the effectiveness of human connection or human uh, connection through communication Merabian's experiment showed that in interpersonal communication, less than 7% of the meaning of a communication is contained 
in the words. Some 38% of the meaning is contained in the pitch, tone, emphasis, and volume of the words. And the bulk of the meaning, some 55%, is contained in body language and contest. So while people are often shocked when they first hear this, they accept it fairly quickly. In virtual teams, that communicating languages are often not a person's first language. The potential of misunderstanding is so high. <laughs> Let me tell you, I can attest to that. Even through emails, sometimes they come across the wrong way. So going back to Merabian's finding, um, it demonst demonstrate that the bulk of meaning is communicated via body language and contest, both of which are difficult to grasp in a, a virtual team. But if words and meanings are misinterpreted because of cultural differences, body language can provide important cues. These are the three areas that must be considered when designing a collaborative team environment. People, process, technology. These components make up the bulk of the team and its communication style. Um, our communication styles. The way in which we communicate is enormously influenced by our cultural conditioning. Culture poses communication problems because there are so many variables and known to the communicators. For the person working and communicating in a multicultural environment, we must remember that the message that ultimately counts in the one that the other person gets or creates in their mind, not the one we send. There is a um, potential for missing half of the message when it is verbal and not visual. Virtual communication requires a high degree of self-awareness. The most useful degree of self-awareness self in global teams comes from being aware of our own cultural bias biases, which is heavily influenced by our personal culture. So, all effective communication begins with attitude, a genuine desire to understand and to be understood. Ultimately, it is imperative to take responsibility to make ourselves understood when we are communicating, particularly when we are working with people whose first language is different from our own. And I can tell you this, I, I, was, I received a phone call uh, from um, India, not just about a half hour ago, uh, calling me about a work that uh, we are performing for a client of ours here in the US, but all their staff is based in India. Uh, let me just tell you, if I did not understand um, the culture, the Indian culture, the way they communicate and how they do things, especially when we are communicating through emails, how it come across or when I'm listening to their um, conversation on the phone, if I did not know much of that, I, I would be lost or I would not really, um, or, or our communication will not yield a good result. But thankfully, I understand where they're coming from and I understand what they're about. And when there is something that comes across in a way that the American culture is not so much aware of, I pick it up real quick just because of my understanding of culture. Other people may not uh, understand that. So let's be clear about that. When your first language is different than others, you have to be a bit more attentive uh, and more empathetic and more understanding and try your best to um, get 
the full picture before you um, make judgments or make opinions or uh, or make decisions. So let's talk about the trust factor. Trust is the essential ingredient for successful team. Effective communication will produce a healthy degree of trust. And let's face it, a large component of success in any setting, not just work teams, is based on trust. It doesn't mean the members have to like each other, but they do have to be able to understand and rely on each other. Trust is the glue of the virtual workplace. Um, Patrick Lencioni, Patrick Lencioni, yeah, in his book, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, says trust is the foundation for a functional team. Trust is the basis of a team as it is the foundation where real teamwork begins. Without trust, admission of weaknesses and mistakes is met with fear and uh, even fear of uh, reprisals. And asking for help becomes more difficult if there is little trust. Um, Trust is uh, closely linked to confidence. So virtual teamwork offers a different set of opportunities for a virtual working team to get to know each other. When establishing trust in virtual working teams, there are underlying cultural aspects of trust that must be recognized. A lack of trust can result in a lot of wasted time managing behaviors and interactions between team members. I can tell you this, lack of trust can create reluctance to take risks and ask for assistance. It can lead to low morale and ultimately high staff turnover. It is important that members of the team have the confidence to speak up or offer suggestions. So people tend to trust those whom they perceive as similar to themselves. So trust is difficult to establish in virtual teams where members are likely to have different backgrounds, experiences, and cultures. The three cultures um, that we want to focus on and experts have talked about when they're talking about virtual um, teams in cross-cultural environments. Um, and there is, a, there is a, a diagram that I, or three-tiered approach that we uh, can mention here is a national culture, personal culture, and corporate culture. These three cultures are separate entities and interlinked with one another. When we are working in virtual teams across borders, we are clearly working within these three cultures, national, personal, and corporate. The unique individual operates within their own culture, which is responsible for establishing the foundations from which we make judgments, form opinions, and formalize decisions. There may be several national cultures that are represented, and even within the corporate culture, there are often differences. These appear at first glance to be subtle, but once we go below the surface, the organizational culture can be significantly different from offices and countries. Once team members are sufficiently aware of their own enculturation, enculturation, however you pronounce it, enculturation, they can then see how comprehensively it affects their own decision making. 
particularly in the area of developing trust and communication techniques. Team members can then progress to understand in other cultures and begin learning how to build trust with people from different cultures. This will improve their understanding not only of the things that are said, but also of those that are not said. So I am going to stop here for this because I said it was going to be uh, pretty quick, but the greater the geographical dispersion of a team, of the, of the team, the more likely the team will have members that are quite different from one another. We recognize that the diversity and virtual elements of virtual teams can increase ambiguity um, and complexity because the potential for misperception, misinterpretation, misevaluation, and miscommunication is far greater. Typically, virtual teams are slow to start, but when managed effectively and well-resourced, they can outperform traditional teams in terms of creativity and responsiveness. So the success of a culturally diverse virtual teams will largely depend on how the diversity is managed. Until next time, stay connected, stay well, and don't forget to make a connection with stranger. And when I say stranger, someone that looks different than you, speaks a different language that you do, and have different norms than you do, you'll be surprised of how much you can learn from that connection. Goodbye and see you soon or hear you soon or connect with you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.